Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm getting a phone call by a girl here that I'm online, so I'm going to have to just shut that down. Uh, we are on live tonight with Millionaire by Halftime and with Presley Swaggerty, and we are doing chapters 15 and 16 tonight. Chapter 15 is the fortune is in the follow-up, and then chapter 16 is how, how to overcome rejection. So we're going to get started. And, um, you know, these are two very, very, very important chapters. I'm trying to read what I've got here. You know what? Success is a mindset. Period. Your success is a mindset. You have to combine mindset with a le high level of commitment. And when you combine uh, a high level commitment with a right mindset, then you're going to be successful. And that's the end of the story. And that's when you are following up. That's when you're setting an appointment. That's when you're closing the deal. That's when you are uh, providing solving problem, problem solving to any kind of an issue that's going on with your products, on your team, with somebody that's having an issue there, with somebody that's having an issue um, in their own personal business, when you're coaching your team. If you approach people and you have the right type of mindset where you're adding value to others, and I mean this, you have to have the right mindset. The mindset needs to be based in belief in yourself and what you're doing and the service and the pro, uh, uh, products that you're offering. So belief in yourself, belief in the products, the service that you're offering, and when you have that mindset, then you can offer and add value to other people. And that is the right mindset that you have to have. It's kind of complex there, but it all goes down, boils down into belief. When you add a personal level of commitment that is a very high level of commitment, you put those two things together, you are going to come up with success and there's no other recipe for it. Those are the two things that you put together. Um, if you get a no or if you get a yes or if you get a maybe when you follow up with people, we're gonna talk about a yes a no and a maybe and how do you deal with those three different answers that you get from people and sometimes it's difficult to tell uh, you know when a yes is right you know let's get you signed up but a no and a maybe can be very very close uh, in relationship and so we've got to discuss that um, but let's dig in first. I'm going to remind myself to go back um, to this idea of yes, no, or maybe. If you are having problems with how to deal with maybes and how to deal with no, this chapter is for you. You're going to have the answers to what you've been needing all along when you are using, when you're reading this chapter. So let's dig in. When you show a business presentation, you always ask the person to join your team. That is a must. At the very end of the presentation, you, have to, you must ask the person to join you, okay? Once you've done that, there's really only three responses. There's a yes, there's a no, or there's a maybe. So if the prospect says yes, you're gonna sign him or her up right then and there. That's the easy part, but if your prospect says no, or if your prospect says maybe, this chapter is going to give you exactly what you need to help them and to get them eventually on board with you and have them join you. So success begins with how you think, with your mindset, with your level of commitment. This is what I just talked about. This applies to follow-up as well and as you are committed. Are you committed or are you simply dipping your big toe in the water, says Presley Swaggerty, right? A person who is not fully committed or is easily shaken by rejection, but is a professional, one who is fully committed knows that he does not, uh, okay, let me go back, I'm completely getting this wrong. Basically, if you're committed, it doesn't matter who tells you no, you're gonna, you're gonna pursue on, you are going to persevere and you are gonna be persistent. That's what basically this little passage is saying. And I'm gonna read this so that I make sure I get it. Are you committed or are you simply dipping your big toe in the water? 
A person who is not fully committed is easily shaken by rejection. So when somebody tells them no, they're going to just like, oh, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I've got what it takes. And they're going to give up. Okay. But a professional who is fully committed, who uh, knows that a no does not mean a no, really. Okay. It just means not now. So really, a lot of the times that you're told no, it's a maybe. It's a not right now. And a not right now is someday maybe I will. So that is not an out and out right out no. I mean, I know in my heart when someone tells me a real no and I mark them off my list. A real no is, Suzanne, I don't want you to contact me ever again, okay? I'm really happy for you. I appreciate that you're passionate about this and that you want to help me. I appreciate that. But I am never going to be interested in what you have to say about this. I'm never going to do network marketing. I want you just to never contact me again about this. If you want to talk to me about life, great. But don't you ever mention Plexus again. That's the person I'm not going to bother again. I don't need to try to convince someone. Okay. And that's an out and out right no. But when somebody says, I can't think about this right now, I'm just not interested. Or I'm just really not interested. You know, ask them if you can follow up in the next six months. Go ahead and schedule that next appointment. Keep control of the entire conversation of the next time that you're going to chat with them. And you're going to revisit them in six months. You're going to be a different person. Your paycheck will be a bigger paycheck. Their whole life will be different. Their, the crisis that's going on right now with their car repairs, having to have a new roof put on their house, school is starting, they're in debt from going on vacations over the summer, whatever the case may be. All of that's going to be uh, put aside. Maybe their husband is close to perhaps losing the job that he has, or things are changed in their financial situation to where they need to make some extra money. Or maybe the wife no longer has something to do and, she, and she's just bored up to tears or whatever. Something has happened. Maybe there's a turn in her health and she needs something that's going to help her. Then, you know, timing is everything. So that's why you control the next conversation. The golden rule, which I'm kind of skipping ahead, is that you've got to set the next conversation. Even if they say, I'm not interested, they've already told you no, ask them another question and say, you know what, I totally understand that the timing is everything and this might not be for you right now and maybe it never will be. But I'll tell you what, I would love to just check in with you in about six months and just see how you're doing and what you're thinking. And they have just told you no the first time, they're not gonna tell you no the second time. They are going to say, sure, no problem, go ahead. And that is your key to write down their name on your calendar and follow up six months. Because in six months, you're going to be relentless. You're going to be persistent and you will follow up with them. You will get back with them and they're going to go, oh my gosh, she actually remembered. In fact, they might even forget that you even talked to them in the first place. Oh, that's right. You did talk to me about Flexus about, what was it, a half a year ago or something? See? So you never know. You have to have three basic character traits if you want to be successful in helping people and following up with them and getting them to join you. You gotta be positive, you have to be patient, you have to be persistent. And if you don't have any or all of those, you can learn and develop those character traits. They can be learned, they, cannot, they can be developed. So if you're positive, you're saying when somebody doesn't answer you and you've got a positive mindset, you're saying, well, they're just royally busy. They're very, very busy and I'm going to get back with them again and they will eventually answer me. That's a positive mindset. A negative mindset would be somebody that says, they don't even want to talk to me. I knew it. I knew it. They don't even want to answer the question. They don't even want to, they don't even want to converse with me. They think I'm bugging them. That's what a negative person says. You've got to turn that around, turn that self dialogue, that script around in your head and always choose to, pe to play the positive tape that's in your head. Do not play the negative tape, the one that worries, the one that says, I don't know if they'll ever want to talk to me. I don't have anything of interest that, they, that they're interested in. They think I'm bugging them. Whatever that negative tape is going on in your head, you've got to get rid of that because remember, you're offering products that change lives. You are offering hope in a box, life in a box. You are offering the opportunity of a lifetime where somebody can take something and turn key a business that's $34.95 and change their whole future for their family. How in the world can you be bugging them? 
And aren't they worth it to say to yourself, I will follow up until they say something to me? I mean, aren't those people worth it? Yes. Yes, they're worth it. Because what are you doing this? Are you doing this for yourself to get a sale? Are you doing this for yourself to change your whole life and it's all about you? Because if it's all about you, then you know, it's easy to get negative very quickly because it's, it doesn't have anything to do with anyone else. But if it's about other people and if it's about helping them and if it's about investing in others and really helping people to change their lives, you will never give up on them because you love them so much and you're never going to stop and you're going to be relentless. Not because you're in it to make money, but because you want to help people and you believe that you're on a mission. Do you see how much more rewarding it is to want to help other people than having it all about you and having your whole new life just for you? I mean, if that's your attitude, I want you to stop and check yourself and ask yourself, is that your attitude? If that is your attitude, you're not going to, to reach Jewel until you change that mindset. It's got to be about other people because a leader is a one who builds a team and a team builder is one who loves others. And there is no other way to say it. You cannot build a team if it's all about you. Okay, and it starts with adding a new ambassador, it starts with following up, it starts with adding a new customer. It starts with customer care, it starts with ambassador care, it starts with ambassador relationships on your team. When you have one or two people, if it's still all about you, you've got some self-discovery to do and you need to uh, work on making it about other people. It can't be just about you. It's not that you can't make this about you to a certain extent. Absolutely. We all join for ourselves. We had to, we had to want to do it for ourselves first, but when it starts to be about others, that's when you begin to get that influence in your life. You become, it's like, I can't explain to you how or the rule book or the, the steps that you take in order for this to happen, but you will become influential. I want you to consider that. Think about it. When you start to care more about other people than about your bottom line, the numbers that come in at the end of the month for yourself, if you think more about others than yourself, you will become attractive to other people. Other people will want to talk with you. They will be attracted to you. They'll want to see what it is you have to offer them. And when you tell them about what you have to offer, they're going to be interested in it because they're interested in you. It is very important that you make your life begin to be about other people. And when you can watch others take off and you can watch others have their dreams come true and you can watch other people achieve their goals, it means everything to you. It will change you as a person. You will grow even more and you will become that leader that God meant you to be. Okay. You will grow into that role of a leader. You will be so attractive. You will be so influential. The friends that you have will want to hear what you have to say. Trust me in this. I'm trying to tell you the recipe for becoming an influential person. And it's that positive mindset that we were talking about. And it's definitely thinking about adding value to other people. I've really grilled into that one tonight. Be patient. You've got to be patient. A traditional business takes three to five years to start up and even to earn a profit. So if it took you three to five years to earn a profit in Plexus, I don't think any of you will still be here. I know that a lot of you are here on this team. Uh, the, one of the number one reasons you stayed is because you got paid. You got paid for the work that you did. Um, Stephen McPherson, the past president of ABC Entertainment, uh, had a passion for wine. He said, our, cab our Cabernet is in barrel for 30 months. That's the kind of wine he's talking about. It's in the barrel for 30 long months. It was a random fact, yet it blew my mind. Before this article, I had no idea that wine had to sit around in a barrel for 30 months. I began to consider what kind of patience it would take to be a venter, a, a maker of fine wine. 
What kind of patience would that take, right? How frustrating it would be that it takes 30 months, almost three full years before you can taste the results of your labor. So all types of businesses demand patience, guys, all of them, business owners, um, you got to have patience. You must develop patience in your network marketing business and you must apply that patience to your follow-up efforts. And be persistent. Think about this, Noah Webster took 36 years to write Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, think about that dictionary, it's ginormous, right? So intricate, so complex, all the terminology. I mean, I used to tell my students, you know, they, they got mad at me if I didn't know a Spanish word. And I said, do you know every word in the English language? And they would always arrogantly say, well, of course. <laughs> and the next thing I knew is I said, tell me what the word incredulous means. And they would just look at me like I was crazy. And they don't know every word in the English language. This, this dictionary thing, this is huge. So think about how long it took him to write that. Persistence comes from having a mission, comes from having a clear vision of where you're going. And if you have this mission and vision and this goal and dream th that's greater than any obstacle, you will not allow an obstacle to stop you. You will not allow a no to stop you. So the magic rule for following up is to be in control of the process. And how are you gonna be in control of the process? I think I mentioned this earlier, you always schedule the next conversation. Now I'm gonna go into some examples of that, but let's go into some examples of follow-up. I'm gonna give you some examples of some follow-up, okay? This all depends, it all depends on who it is you're talking to. I'm sorry, I've got so many messages on here and I've had to look at them. It all depends on who you're talking to. How long have you been talking to this person? If you've been talking to them off and on for the last six months and you've recently been chatting with them, then I would just real quick grab your phone and send a voice text. Do not text something out because if, they, if you send a voice text, they, can, they have to click on it and listen to it in order to know what you said. They can't look at their phone and know what you said. They have to listen to it, right? And guess what's in your voice? Passion, belief, emotion, right? So I would encourage you to send a one minute voice text. Hey, Janine, this is Suzanne. Hey, I know you think I'm probably crazy and that I'm bugging you, but I don't think I'm bugging you. I just really care a lot about you. And, um, you know, I know that we've been playing phone tag and we haven't been able to catch up. I just really want to connect with you and I want to talk to you more about what Plexus has done to change my life. And I want to make sure that you understand is how it can help you, how it can change the health and the financial picture for your family. Uh, I just would love to get on the phone with you. Shoot me a, a voicemail or a text in the next day or so. If I don't hear back from you, I will, I will get back in touch with you on Thursday around 530. I can't wait to chat with you. I've been looking forward to talking to you. Talk to you soon. That's it. Now that's if you've been playing phone tag, okay? That's if you're trying to connect. That's if you just can't seem to get something down on the books. They're busy. People are royally, monumentally busy. Please know that. You are thinking about Plexus 24 seven. You're thinking about sponsoring. You're thinking about following up. You're thinking about your IPA. You're thinking about, I gotta grow my customer base. You're thinking, I gotta grow a team. I gotta do this, Plexus, 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 Plexus. I gotta post on Facebook. All you do is think about it 24 seven. Even while you're doing your regular job, you're thinking about Plexus. That's no, I know that's what I was doing. I would be in the middle of teaching Spanish and all I was doing is thinking about my team, we're thinking about what I'm getting ready to post on Facebook, thinking about who I was gonna call, thinking about who I should reach out to, that's what I was doing. <laughs> so, my point is, is if you've been in communication, voice text, something short. If you haven't been in communication for a while, and you're on a, maybe a two to three week follow up with them, and they're just not answering you, you've, you've gone radio silence with them, they're crickets chirping at you. Maybe you're following up once a month, once every three weeks, once every two weeks, there's three ways you can follow up, but you remember you've got to add value. 
doesn't matter what you're saying to them, you got to add value. I would send them an article that's talking about a, uh, an ingredient in one of our products that would really help them with whatever condition they're dealing with. Um, I would go and do some research. It's going to take some intentional work. Go and find an article about one, uh, an ingredient in one of our products that's going to help them with their condition. Because you've already done your homework. You've already asked them a bunch of questions. You've already connected with them. You've already found out uh, what they're struggling with with their health. And you also have asked them what they're struggling with if, they're, if you know they're struggling in finances. So you know both of those. You can find an article on an uh, ingredient in a product. You can also send them a uh, testimony. Go find a particular testimony that you think would speak to them. Or if they're interested in the business, find a business testimony that's written out with a picture. Or go find a powerful video diamond documentary that's very similar to their lifestyle or something that, that they're looking for in their life. And here's how your follow-up would be. You remember, you're going to send them a third-party tool, an article a, about an ingredient or an article about the importance of the ingredient in whatever. Um, you're going to send them a testimony. You're going to send them a diamond doc or a video uh, a, that somebody's giving their own personal testimony that's very similar to something that they need. Okay, so one of those three things. Hey, Janine. Hey, listen, it's Suzanne. I just, I just was reading today and, and came across this article, this testimony, this diamond documentary. And I'm telling you, when I was listening, reading, watching, whatever the case may be, you, you just came to my mind. And it reminded me so much about you, and it had your name written all over it, and I just know that it would bless you. Please pay special attention to the part where it says, da-da-da-da-da. Really let them know. You know what that article says. You're not just pulling some random, random article out and shoving it across the internet. You've actually done some work, and you really do care about them. They're going to see that. And just show them, hey, really pay close attention to when she says, that da, da 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 because I know that could happen for you too. Or read, pay, pay special attention to the part where it says that alpha lipoic acid really does reduce inflammation at the cellular level, and I think that would really help you in your condition. You know, whatever the case may be, mention something and then say, you know, Janine, I know you might think I'm crazy, and some people actually probably do, but I personally believe that I'm on a mission to help people change their lives, and I know because of all the results that I see all over this team and in my own personal life and my family that lives change every single day with Plexus, and it's because I love you so much that I care about you that I'm reaching out to you today, so please let, let me know uh, what you think about this uh, particular article. I, if I don't hear back from you the next uh, day or so, I will be in touch. Um, I would love to chat with you on the phone. And uh, if I don't hear back, I'll probably get either text you or give you a call on Thursday about 5.30. So again, you're scheduling the next conversation, but you're adding value. You're sending them something of importance and value that's going to change their life. It's going to make them believe in Plexus and understand that you're on a mission to help them. You're, you're consulting with them. You're providing an answer for whatever their problem is. You're not saying, this is what not to do. Okay, this is not a follow-up. You're not going to say, hey, Janine, have you had a chance to go look at my website? Hey, Janine, you, I know you told me that you were interested in Plexus. Did you have any other questions? Hey, Janine, now that's not a bad follow-up if they've been asking questions, okay? But in general, don't ask that if, if they're radio silence with you, okay? Don't say, hey, Janine, did you have any other questions? I know you were interested in Plexus. And all they've been doing is saying nothing to you for weeks on end. I wouldn't do that. Add value to them somehow, okay? Because when all you're doing is saying, did you have any questions, where's the value? There is no added value, okay? You can also check in with a single statement like, hey, Janine, I'm just checking in with you. How are you? Okay. That's if they're completely radio silent. And I know it's not adding value, but in a way it is because you're asking them how they're doing. You know, um, you might even say that you've noticed that they just got back from this great uh, vacation. You noticed that their husband was in the hospital. You noticed that something was going on in their life that you saw on the Facebook post and that you are either excited for them or you're very prayerful for them or you feel some 
um, you're empathetic to their situation and you just wanted to be a friend and let them know that you're thinking about them. Whatever the case may be, you have to decide where is the level of relationship that you have with this person. But always think about before you follow up that you want to add value. Sometimes when you've gone complete radio silence for so long, you need to just talk to them for a while about something other than plexus. Get them to come out of their shell and get them to just talk with you. Hey, hey, Janine, I'm just so missed talking with you and chatting with you. How have things been lately? You know, I've been just like crazy busy. You know, my husband is this, this, and this, um, you know, at school, blah, 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 at the job, such and such. And I know that you told me you blah, 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 blah. Um, just tell me how that, how is that going? How is that going for you right now? What's the latest news on that? Um, you know, show that you love them, show that you care about them. And that's adding value. But without doing anything and saying anything about Plexus, I think it's very important. So I think I've covered all the different types of follow-up. But remember, you can always go back to the article. You can go back to the, the testimony and the diamond documentary or the video testimony of someone who is very, who has a business testimony, a third party uh, piece of information that's going to add value to them. Okay, so how do you schedule that next conversation? Hey, here's an example. I'll call you after I watch the DVD. Okay, well, according to the rule, you must schedule the next conversation. That means you must schedule the specific time to talk to Janine. So you would reply to Janine saying, hey, excellent, give me a call. But if I don't hear back from you, I'll call you at Thursday at four o'clock. So you are always into control. If they say, hey, I'm gonna watch this, this video, I'm gonna watch this DVD, I'm gonna watch this video and I'll give you a call. That doesn't mean they're gonna call you, they're telling you they are, but they might not ever. So you take control of the situation. Hey, absolutely, great, watch that video, Tell, you know, get me some questions about what you're thinking and uh, give me a call. And if I don't hear back from you, I will call you on Thursday at five o'clock. Um, so if they say, hey, if you call them up and they say, I can't really talk right now, hey, let's talk tomorrow. Well, they're saying they're gonna talk to you tomorrow, but that might not ever happen. They might not ever call you. You've gotta take control. You say, hey, absolutely, no problem. Let's talk tomorrow. Uh, if I don't hear back from you, I will call you about 5.30. You're taking control of the next conversation. If you call them up and there's a voicemail and they don't answer the phone, you say, hey, Janine, I'm sorry I missed you. Give me a call back. But if I don't hear from you, I'll just call you tomorrow at 515. Okay, so you're just never letting the chain break. You never stop setting up the next conversation. So if the prospect says maybe after a presentation immediately, and he, he or she says, well, hey, I need to go talk to my husband, or I need to talk to my wife, or they say, I need to pray about it, or I need to do some due diligence, I gotta go do, do some research, just let me have my time, let me, let me think about it. You say, no problem, you go home and talk to your spouse, and I'll give you a call tomorrow and see what you've decided. <laughs> you don't let them off the hook. If they say, hey, I need to think about it, now you say, hey, no problem, you go home and you think about it, I'll give you, I, uh, I will call you tomorrow and see what you have, to see what you've decided. I need to, you know, I need to do some research. Absolutely, I'll give you a couple of days. If I don't hear back from you, I'll give you a call and you can tell me what you've decided. You see what I mean? Yeah, don't let them off the hook, okay? And I think I went over the six month rule. If they absolutely tell you no, I, you know, I'm just not interested right now. The six month rule is that you don't ever let them say, okay, I understand. You're not interested, okay, no, no problem. I think I'll mark you off my list. No, you don't mark them ever off your list unless they say, don't ever call me again. I'm not interested. Please, Suzanne, don't ever call me again about this. I love you, but I don't wanna hear about Plexus ever again. That's an absolute no. But if they just say, I'm just not interested, Suzanne, I'm really happy for you, I'm just not interested. You say to them, completely get that. I completely get that, Jeannie. You know, I was a skeptic for months on end, and I totally understand time is everything. Timing is everything. Would you mind if I call, I wouldn't even say would you mind. I would say, what do you think about me calling you in about six months just to see how you're doing and what you're thinking about life, what's going on in your life? 
Oh, absolutely. Go ahead and call me in six months. They're going to think you're going to forget anyway, but you won't because you're going to be relentless and persistent. You're going to write it down in your calendar and you will call them up in six months to see how they're doing and what they're thinking. And like I said, everything will be different then. You'll be a better person. You'll be a better ambassador. They're going to have a different timing in life. They might be ready to join you. Your own personal development will start attracting others like a magnet. Trust me, if you start developing yourself, you will develop so much influence over people because you will become attractive. Mm -hmm. Presley Swaggerty says, do not res resolve, resolve to never scratch a single name off of your list until that person either joins your team or is literally in the grave. And I know that sounds very, very um, assertive, <laughs> to say the least. But it's the truth. You don't want to ever assume that somebody is a complete no unless they say, please don't ever contact me again. And radio silence is not a no. Crickets chirping is not a no. So please know that. There should not be any question now as to how often you follow up with people, what you say in a follow up, and when is the right time to get back with them because now you're in control of the next conversation. You know that you have to add value. You know that you have to gauge the conversation and how much contact you've been having, having with them. You know that you're in complete control of the follow-up. And if you cannot get a control of this follow-up practice right here, you need to go back and read this, this chapter again. And you need to get some personal growth and development and that's how you're going to change yourself. So you don't ever, ever give up. You don't ever give up. Presley Swaggerty says, it took me five long months of cold, hard rejection to finally sponsor my best friend, Randy Hedge, into my business. Was it worth it? Well, let's just say it's been worth millions of dollars to both of us. Imagine if I'd quit on Randy the very first time that he told me no. Think about that. If you give up on somebody the very first time they tell you no, are they worth it? Having a whole new life for them, are they worth it? Yes. Over the years, he says, I've, been, I've seen so many new associates use this one-shot mentality. When they talk to people, I believe this mindset is a big roadblock to success. A one-shot mentality is the mindset of an amateur, is a beginner. The professional understands that the fortune is in the follow-up. The fortune, 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 fortune is in the follow-up. Okay? An amazing example is a close teammate of, uh, of his. He's talking about Kenny Kramer, a guy named Kenny Kramer, showed uh, his best friend our business when Kenny first joined. Kenny's buddy immediately shot down the idea and tried to steal Kenny's dream of financial freedom. Did it work? No. Kenny had committed to win. The rejection from his friend merely strengthened his resolve to succeed. His commitment to his kids, to his dream, to his business was stronger than any single rejection. And because Kenny stayed in the, in the game and kept following up, three years later, the same friend joined Kenny's team. And I know some of you have not been in this for three years. I know because I haven't hit the three-year mark. And this team is not three years old yet. Okay? It's not even two years old. And so the people on my team right now are, are under two years committed to this, to this thing called, called Plexus here. So, you know, imagine this. Some of the closest people in your life, your friends, your family may never join you. But a lot of these people that are very, very close to you, it might take them several years before they're ever going to do it. They're waiting to see if you're going to become successful because they are so skeptical, right? You never give up. Never give up. Okay, so he's talking about timing and how six months changes everything when someone tells you that they're not interested. Fast forward the calendar to six months when you're doing that six-month follow-up rule. This example of when Jimmy followed up with his brother in six months, Ryan, his brother's response was, tell me more about that home-based business. And this is after 
six months of before. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Didn't want to have a thing to do with it. Okay. In six months, the response from the brother was, tell me more about this home-based business that you're doing. So what had changed? The opportunity was the same opportunity as it was six months prior. The product was the same. The presentation was the same. But the timing in Ryan's life, which is the brother, was completely not the same. So John Maxwell says, put on a new pair of shoes. Put on a new pair of shoes. Try to stand in another person's shoes. Try to look at their life from their perspective. And don't just see things from your perspective, like, oh, they don't want to talk to me. Oh, they're never going to join me. They don't want to hear what I have to say. They think I'm bugging them. Stop thinking that. Put yourself in their perspective, in their shoes. See things from their standpoint, from their point of view. When you do that, rejection becomes less of a personal thing and more of a timing thing. We will truly understand that nobody really means, that no actually means really not now, not now. We will learn to keep following up until the timing is right. And you know what? I need some water. I'm going to go grab it over here on the counter. I'll be right back. It's sitting here. I forgot to grab it. Um, go ahead and read through the homework. It says something real quick. I'm going to go back over it here in a second. Okay. The homework says create a reliable system to automate and organize your follow-up efforts. The system can be digitized, such as a Google Calendar, or it can be handwritten in a yearly planner. Typically, the most effective systems are those that, uh, are, those that are the most simple. So whatever the case may be, find yourself a system to where you can have a calendar that you are writing something in so that if you say to somebody, I'm going to follow up with you on Thursday at 5.30, you write them in your calendar Thursday at 5.30, you're going to follow up. You're going to either A, give them a call, text them, whatever it is that you said you were going to do. You might ask the most organized person that you know for his or her advice. And it doesn't have to be a plexus person. Go and find somebody that has a big schedule and ask them how they keep their calendar organized. Okay. Remember, to follow up effectively, you must be organized. As soon as you schedule a follow-up, write it down, get it in your system. As with any other skill, this is all learnable. It starts when you decide that you'll be organized and that you'll act as a professional in your follow-up efforts. You're not going to just kick the tires and kind of halfway do these follow-up things. You're going to do it consistently in a systematic, intentional manner and that you'll create a system to keep you on track. That's how you're going to become successful. Don't forget this. And I'll end the chapter with the fortune is in the follow-up. How to overcome rejection. I take rejection as somebody blowing a bugle in my ear to wake me up and get me going rather than a retreat. Sorry. Yes, rather than a retreat. And that's by Sylvester Stallone. So rejection wakes him up instead of makes him want to run for the hills, right? So this is a very big chapter, not in length, but as important as it is. It's a big, important chapter. Whether I'm making a contact, setting an appointment, showing a business plan, or following up, one of the biggest potential obstacles in network marketing is rejection. Rejection is one of the toughest human emotions that you can experience, and dealing with it is an ongoing challenge. And I know because, honestly, you might think I don't deal with it, but I do. Every single person deals with this, okay? Um, in fact, I truly believe, this is my own personal opinion, I think that rejection in the back of our minds, even the most confident person like myself, the most uh, believing person and... Uh, you know, a person that has success, I would say like myself, I'm certainly not a diamond, but I'm successful, I'm confident, and I have a high level of belief. I think even for me, that that is the thing behind the reason if I choose not to reach out or follow up, even though I don't want to admit it, that's the thing, that's the reason why I'm putting it off, making it the last thing that I do, or if I procrastinate, or if I'm late in doing the things I've said I'm going to do. That is secretly the thing behind the whole reason behind I'm not by the reason that I'm not executing it is because of the fear of rejection. It's a powerful emotion and we don't like it. It doesn't feel good. We don't like that feeling, right? So 
It doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, or how much success you've achieved before you start your networking business. Some people are just going to tell you no. They're going to tell you no, and it doesn't matter anything about what you say, how, how passionately you say it, how, how passionately you believe it, and how logical it is that they have so much time and so much energy and so much money to invest, and this would just be perfect for them. It doesn't matter. There's going to be people like that that will just tell you no. There's nothing you can do about it. So Jeannie's best friend is a great example of a successful network marketing professional giving a presentation and still being told no. And I want to read some of these examples because this is one where the most amazing network marketing professional is giving the presentation to the greatest potential that has it all lined up and it could ha totally work for them. And they still say no. Okay. Uh, I know it's kind of long, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. When my company began national expansion, I was excited about the opportunity to build my business in a new area. The announcement was made that I was, and I was thrilled because we were expanding into the state where Jeannie's best friend lived. As soon as the market opened, we called Mike and Lori and told them we were going to go and be in that area and wanted to come by and catch up and share something with them. And these were friends of ours. And we were so excited to share our life-changing opportunity with them. At this point, we had earned several million dollars. Oh, several million dollars. We were the number one money earners, and we had a monthly residual income greater than the most people's annual salary. Their monthly income was greater than most people's yearly salary. So sitting at Mike and Lori's house, it's a no-brainer, right? They're just going to join. Not. <laughs> okay. Sitting at Mike and Lori's house, I went through our presentation as I had done a thousand times before. I had even a little more zest than I usually had. As Mike was a sharp business person, I just knew that the company track record and our success, Mike would see, that, see it totally right away. When I finished, I looked up at Mike and Lori and said, well, you guys are the only people we know in Georgia, and I'm going to work with you guys to help you be successful. We have a chance to make a lot of money together. Let's get started. In other words, not, hey, what do you say? What do you think? You don't ever ask people that. You don't, let's get you started. Close the deal. Let's get you started. And what happened? Look at this. Mike and Lori looked at each other and said, we are really happy for you guys but we don't think right now is the time for us to start something new. <laughs> there it was, no. They had seen 100% of the information. They knew that we had great success in our home state. They even understood that they could start on the ground floor in Georgia and that it would be just sky's the limit, right? However, they still said no, and I was so disappointed, but I didn't let this slow me down. I realized that it doesn't matter how successful, how brilliant and articulate you may be, if the time is not right in the prospect's life, he or she will not join you. Period. It's all about timing. So Sarah Beth almost quits is an example of a young, inexperienced person facing rejection. And I think this is the classic, okay? At one point, rejection almost drove our daughter, Sarah Beth, out of network marketing. But because she stayed the course, she is now one of the top young network marketing uh, earners in the country. So what she did is she says, I really struggled with rejection for the first year in networking. Uh, but one day it hit me. Some associates on my team were thanking me for getting them involved. And some started telling me how networking had changed their lives. And it dawned on me that if I had quit after all this rejection and all this adversity, that I would never have met all these new friends who are now so positive and motivated and full of life. And I skipped a whole part about how she was in college and she just got out of her comfort zone and tons of people told her no and she almost quit. So that's an example of, an, of a, a young networker who, who was rejected, rejected so many times that they nearly quit. And this is the most common experience, I think, okay? Um, you need to not take it personally. It's like a person serving coffee, a waitress serving coffee. Um, and I don't know if he goes into that example, but imagine that you're in a coffee shop 
and everybody's drinking coffee and having a conversation with the people that are at each table. You're the waitress and you're going around and you're saying you're getting ready to pour coffee in the person's cup because you see that it's half empty and they just say, oh, no, not right now. Oh, no, no, thank you. And you say, no problem. And you go to the next person's cup and you get ready to pour coffee. Oh, oh great. Thank you. And you pour some in. And then you go to the next person's cup and they're like, oh, no, I'm, we're about ready to leave. We're done. Thank you so much. They don't need any. And then you go to the next person and they're like, uh, ma'am, can I have some coffee? I, I, I'm out over here. And then you go to the next person's, oh, no, I'm, I don't need any more. I, I, can't, I can't drink more than a half a cup. Okay. Do you see what I mean? It's like you are pouring coffee. Some people want it. Some people don't. Some people think it's the right time. Some people don't. If you can see it as if you're just pouring coffee and people are saying no to the coffee, they're not saying no to you. In other words, they're saying the time is not right. <laughs> they're not saying you suck. Get out. I don't want to see your ugly face. You bug me. I think what you got is stupid and your stuff is stinks. <laughs> And it's too expensive, by the way. Okay, now I just now made all that up. <laughs> but that is not what they're saying when they say no to you, okay? They're not rejecting you as a person. They're rejecting the offer of what you're giving them. They're saying no to the opportunity. They're saying no really to themselves, right? Because the timing is not right for them. They're going to drink coffee tomorrow morning because they love coffee. They're coffee drinkers. But they just don't want any more right now. They've had enough. Okay, so re imagine it that way. So don't take per uh, rejection personally. A no or a not interested response to your business is not a personal rejection of you. Think about it. Um, if you tried to recruit your mom into your business and she was content with her life and told you that she's not interested, would you consider it a personal rejection of you? Like she absolutely detests you and rejects you as a person? No, because she's your mom right? So of course not. It's not about you. It's about the business. They don't want the business. People are not rejecting you. It's just not right now in their lives. It's not the right time. Okay. I think I've gone over this. So guess what? Your mindset needs to be, okay, next, who's the next person I can talk to? Who's the next person I can try to pour in this coffee cup? Who's the next coffee cup that's empty and that needs some coffee? Let's go fill their coffee cup up. The Randy Hedge story is so important. This is the best friend example. Um, he was not ready for six months, but now he's the top earner, top earner in the company. So if somebody says no to your opportunity, um, she's saying no at this time only. Things change in people's lives. And if you treat the prospect with respect and leave her with a positive experience, there's a good chance that a time will come when she's going to join your team. Reflect with me on my discussions with my best friend. He says, this is a... Uh, Presley Swaggerty talking about Randy Hedge. I think it really illustrates how sometimes we just need to let it go and keep our sights on another day when the time will be right and just go find somebody else to talk to. Okay. Um, so this is how he talked to him and talked to him. He says, no, Presley, it's just not for me. It's not my time. It's not, not right for me right now. Uh, sure, no problem. I'll keep you posted on how I'm doing. That was all that was said about the business once he presented it. A um, month or two went by. How's the new business going? How's it going? And Presley would just give him like the lowdown of what's going on in the business. Um, and then finally, after so much time had passed, two or three more months, he began to ask, hey, I want to take a look at that business opportunity again, that one you were telling me about. I'm really in. I, I really want to get started. See, timing changes. The point of the story is that if somebody tells you no, it simply may not be the good time. It's not the right time for them, okay? But they, will, might, they might be interested in it later. Negative people. Some negative people, you're going to meet them. They're going to be rude to you. They're going to be negative. And you need, just need to say, next, right? And like, uh, what's her face? Rita Davenport at uh, convention. She said, you just like this delete you push the delete button as if you didn't even talk to them like they don't even exist okay so when naysayers arise remember to consider the source if somebody's hateful to you okay i always say never listen to or take advice from people that are more screwed up than you are 
and my wonderful, amazing friend, Angela Heyman, who's listening to this right now, says, <laughs> and I wrote this, I wrote this in the margin down here, remind yourself of the blessing that you are not related to them. <laughs> Joy, joy, rejoice. Rejoice in the fact that you're not related to them. You don't have to really talk to them ever again. Delete, right? Next. Okay, so did somebody mention a barn? This is a great example and one of the most irritating examples because this is when you present something to, to the person and it's as if they didn't even hear you. They're off on some other planet. And it's like you're speaking gibberish to them. They're, they're thinking about something completely different. And this is just not the right person ever. Like never. They'll never be the right person for this thing. Um, all right. So um, here it is. The guy says, uh, Presley, I got you to have, you got to come and talk to this guy. You're, he, you know, he's a lawyer. You're a lawyer. I forget if that's the case. He's a lawyer. You're a lawyer. Uh, you used to be a this or he used to be a coach. You're a coach. He's going to relate to you. Come in. I could do this presentation like, like the back of my hand, but I know he's really going to relate to you. I got to have the top uh, money earner come in and do this presentation. So Presley came in, agreed to do the presentation. He says, I can remember it vividly to this day. After hearing the presentation, the guy sat back in his chair and the first words out of his mouth were, hey, the zoning commission won't let me build a barn behind my house. You've got to be kidding me, right? I think I would have probably said that. I am so not afraid to say stuff like that. Um, that's just something the guy just blurted out of nowhere. So Pat Presley says, I packed up my stuff. I looked over at Randy. I said, listen, buddy, I'm going to let you finish this one. I shook the guy's hand and walked the heck out of there. Um, here's the point. It doesn't matter who's, who's doing the presenting. It doesn't matter. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person or the wrong thing to the right person. You got to get that down. You cannot say the right thing to the wrong person or the wrong thing to the right person. If you're talking to the right person, it doesn't matter if you say something wrong, they're going to join you. Okay? You got to get that down. So you had the number one money earner and the number six money earner presenting this thing. And this barn dude who talks about that he can't get a zoning commission to agree to let him put his barn in the back, whatever. That guy didn't get in. It didn't matter who was doing the presentation, okay? Uh, the guy wasn't even listening. All right, that's just insane. So what are you going to do to minimize your rejection? Well, the biggest thing that you can do is improve your posture. And I'm telling you, this is the answer to just about every uh, objection ever. And I mean it. I'm going to explain. And I think I have explained this many different ways. I, whenever I am genuinely talking to somebody that I'm reaching out to, not somebody that's a stranger, actually, I have been told it's, it's too expensive by somebody off of garage sale sites. I think somebody has told me that, like it's too expensive. I don't even engage them in conversation. I'm not going to try to convince them that it's not too expensive. In fact, I don't give them the actual prices anymore. I used to give people, when they asked me how much does it cost, and I gave them like the lowdown of the, the number one package. I don't even do that anymore because they just, it's just a, uh, a road to let them say, well, it's too expensive. And I haven't even begun to build a connection with them yet. I don't even know what they're suffering with. I don't know what their, in, their health issues are or whether they want to do something to earn an extra income. I'm not going to give them the answer to how much does it cost because I know that that's just the first thing they're going to get is an opportunity to tell me it's too expensive. So I'm not going to go there. My goal is to build a relationship first and then once they, the relationship is built, the connection is made, and once they really start to be interested in what I have to offer, I'm going to eventually tell them uh, that the products are around 3 to $4 a day, uh, depending on what their issues are. And by the time the connection is made, 
there's not a question of whether it's too expensive or not because now the value has been added. I have added value to our service. I have added value to our business opportunity and I have added value to our products. And there's no way in the world that anybody would look at it and say that it's too expensive because it's absolutely affordable. Your posture can absolutely and directly affect the amount of rejection that you experience. So posture is probably the most underestimated skill a networker can, earn, to, can learn. You've got to learn to have posture. And it comes from inside. Posture refers to your attitude when you're talking to others about your business, when you are setting up appointments, when you're showing the business plan, when you're following up, the whole thing when you're closing, posture or how you carry or present yourself when conducting or discussing your network marketing business can directly affect the amount of rejection that you get, okay? Confidence and being strong about what you're doing is the most important thing. This creates an attraction. It creates an attraction between you and that person and it limits objections and rejections from others who may want to join you. Posture is everything. It's, it's like attitude. Attitude is everything and it's belief. It comes from belief, guys. It's so important that you build that up. People often say it's easy for you to talk strong, Presley. You've already made your millions, right? No. The secret is, is that he talked that way when he had zero dollars. And that's what I tell everybody. If, if I were a diamond ambassador, which I'm not, but if I were a diamond ambassador sitting here and somebody said, that's easy for you to Suzanne, say, Suzanne, you're a diamond, I would say no. I, when I had zero dollars, zero products, zero testimony, and had nobody on my team, I talked the same way that I'm talking right now. I had that belief. Belief precedes the rank. You don't earn the rank and then all of a sudden have the posture. You don't all of a sudden earn the rank and then as a result, you have the belief. The belief precedes the rank. The belief is the reason that you ranked, okay? You don't rank and then have a belief. It doesn't work that way. So it's critical that you practice some of these things to improve your posture. Make eye contact, smile really big at people, uh, speak up. Uh, walk fast. Oh, no problem. I'm like walking on a mission over here. Have high energy and always have a winning attitude. And even introverts can do this. I know introverts are just people that don't like to be about, around big crowds. People exhaust them. They drain them of energy. Whereas an extrovert, it's easier to be around more people and people energize them. That's the only difference. If you talk to a lot of intro introverts, they can still talk to people. They can still sound very interesting and positive and, and speak up and, and have high energy, but it's just that the way that they feel inside and what people do to them, it, it's, it's a whole different opposite thing than what's an, what, what ex, uh, extroverts deal with. The big takeaway If a prospect has an attitude with you, you need to walk away. Get your stuff. Thank you for your time. Out the door. Don't give them two seconds. If they uh, are rude to you and they continually have an attitude and they're raising objections, you are lowering yourself and reducing the value of yourself and what you have to offer and your plan the more you sit there and listen to it. So you need to end it. If you can't help them overcome their objections and they're so negative and they keep giving you an attitude, you say, you know, you know Janine, I appreciate your time. Uh, this is probably not, not the right time for you and it might not even by, ever be the right time for you. Have a nice evening. Grab your things out the door. As soon as you're walking away and you have removed the opportunity from them and you've removed yourself from them, if they actually have already started to see the value in what you're giving to them, they're going to say, wait, Suzanne, I'm sorry, come back. I'm sorry, I have an attitude. I'm just so skeptical. If that's really the case, then accept their apology and come back. Sometimes people are so radically skeptical. They've been burned, and that gives them an attitude, and they just won't give you an inch, right? But if they really are that negative, then you turn away and you walk away. So prospects realize that you don't care if they say yes or no. If they realize that you don't give a care whether they join you or not, you have power. 
and you have control over who joins you on this team. And I think that's very, very important. They, re they need to see that you're not desperate to have them join you. You don't need them. You would love for them to join you, but not if they're going to have that attitude. You're, you won't take people like that. You'll, you'll sooner take uh, somebody else than you'll take them. Okay, now, I love this because this reminded me of Susie McRae in this little statement right here. And she tells me this all the time. I think she says it a little bit differently. I also believe that your prospects realize that you don't really, uh, that if your prospects realize that you don't really care if they say yes or no, they will let down their guard and you will have much more of a productive meeting. In fact, if we spend too much time debating or trying to convince somebody, our efforts may be determined uh, to our future success with that prospect. So don't allow them to browbeat you. So here's the Susie McRae. Ask yourself, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? <laughs> and I think Susie says it a little bit differently, but she always says it's better to let, you know, stop trying to be right. And if she could talk right now and speak up, I'm sure she would say that. She'll, she'll remind me of the quote here pretty soon when we go off this. The world has a, the habit of making room for the man whose words and actions show that he knows where he is going. The world is going to make room for the man whose words and actions show that he knows where he's going to go. Okay, that's Napoleon Hill. So success is up to you. If you have a dream, you know where you're going. So will the people around you. They're going to sense your posture, right? You will send that message out to everybody that you are uh, seeing everywhere in your life. The message will say, I am on the road to success. And if you join my team, you can be successful too. So this is the last thing that I'm going to read and we're going to be done. People want to be a part of a winning team. When you are determined to reach your dreams, you will tap into an inner power that you may not have realized that you possess. This inner power will help you to overcome the rejections, objections, challenges, and fears that get in the way. I've seen some of the most gifted people in the world accomplish little with their lives. Hear that. As a teacher, that's what I have seen over and over again. As it says, I have seen some of the most gifted people in the world accomplish little with their lives, not because they lack ambition, not because they don't have a dream, and not because they are afraid of work. They have accomplished little simply because fear of rejection and the unknown had a hold on them that would not let go. Remember, courage is not the absence of fear, but the realization that something in your life, in our life, is more important than the fear. Something in our lives is more important than our fears. The only person who can hold you back is you. Remember these words, if it is to be, it's up to me. You can have a life of financial and time freedom, or you can have a life of mediocrity. The choice is yours. And that's the end of that. Okay, I am going to unmute, and I'm going to gallery. Questions, comments? <laughs> Questions and comments. That was very good. You like it? Yeah, thank you. Hey, look, 909. I did it in an hour and 10 minutes. Incredible. Awesome. Okay. Debbie says, uh, wonderful meeting tonight. Really, this hits home to me. Okay, and uh, she said, amen, sister, earlier. I bet that was on the uh, delete next, right, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this this last part about it's up to you. Uh huh. Yeah. If it's to be, it's up to me. Yep. I can't tell you how many times since convention I've heard something in that same vein and it just keeps repeating, repeating, and repeating. So it's yep. almost becoming like a little mantra. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. And you know what, guys? 
I just have to give credit where credit's due. I know everybody's working really hard. Some of the people, though, that I have seen step up their game, I'm telling you, now, unless you've told me otherwise, I don't know, Lori has stepped up her game big time. That girl works like she's, I mean, she's asking me about this one who's talking to her and that one's who's talking to her. He's really working hard. I just have to give you some kudos. Yay. Thank you. And Yay. all of you, I know there's so many of you that are working hard. I want to just give some kudos to Kelly Bruce. Y'all should have seen her in this meeting the other night. This uh, Christine says, you know, Christine, he says in the meeting, who wants to give their testimony? And I'm like, come on, give your testimony. I'm like thinking that in my head. And Kelly's like, I will. And she stands up. She's like, I think maybe I should stand up. And she stands up and with a voice that I have, I don't think I've heard before. It's loud and it's compelling. And it's, I was like, the first thing I thought is he's a teacher. She has passion. You know, that woman just lit the room on fire. You could have you could have just put a pin drop in there. I mean, I am just so proud at how she shared from her heart with passion and belief. The whole room thought that if they weren't doing plexus, there was something wrong with them. And I just, I just loved it. Oh, it was so Yay, awesome. Kelly. <laughs> Good job, Kelly. Yay. <laughs> Susie, what is that statement that um, you're either going to stop being right or something? What is that? Um, is it the one of uh, the minute you stop making people wrong and trying to be right is the minute you have complete freedom and power in your life. The minute you stop trying to make others wrong and be right. Yep. Yep. And oh, stop. Wow. Yeah, that's true. It's a very hard thing to live by because <laughs> we like to be right. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we like to make others wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have something they want to say? It can be a comment, observation, question. This, yeah, this is exactly what I'm going through right now. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Like, Me too. People being negative, me having to be like, okay, bye. Mm -hmm. Which is mm -hmm. really hard. Delete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I learn more every time we talk about follow up stuff. So, yeah. Um, that's good. good. Follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> In fact, that presentation that I've done with all of your teams now, I think I've hit everybody on here. Heather, I don't think I've I Zoomed with your team, but um, I have Zoomed with all of these teams. Yeah, individually about it's too expensive, follow up and closing the deal. And I think those are three of the biggest issues. And I know people have so many issues with following up. Um, I think it's just so important of a skill that we learn that. So that's why I did the presentation and I did it individually with all the teams because I thought it was so important. Yeah, I we recorded. actually have business builders. We'll do that. Yep. They're all wholesale right now. I have like one or two that are starting, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Who uh, in here has done the 21 laws of irrefutable laws of leadership or is currently doing it now? Yes. Okay, we've got Kelly Wedge, Susie McRae, Janet Kwame, I know has done it. I think Frankie and Tracy, are you currently in a, a group right now doing it? We were, but it kind of fell apart. So. <laughs> you were, but it fell apart. We're going to try again. Okay. All right. Tina, highway to Emerald. Okay. What about Highway to Emerald? I think that's part of Highway to Emerald. The 21 irrefutable laws, I can't imagine that it would be. I think that that's something that you have to read and work with a team individually. Okay. She's going to do a book study on that. I don't think it's going to be that. I know Mary has done it. Lori has done it. Kelly, not yet. Debbie Willingham, not yet. Angela, yes. Angela was in one of them. Susie has been done one of Yes. That'd be okay. mine and we started we started some of it so she's she's probably reading okay reading it okay 
All right. Uh, all right. Well, I am just going to go ahead and say it. And some of you have already done it, but I'm considering very seriously, and it's going to be a lot on my plate because I'm going to do Highway to Emerald as well. I'm going to do whatever Christine's doing. I'm going to go through all of that with you guys. Um, I also really am convicted to do a team study with the whole team. Uh, but I also want to do 21 irrefutable laws and pour into a small group. I just feel like I need to keep that going and do one in the fall and one in the spring and just constantly pick some people to pour my life into. Uh, it's just, and this is where you don't record the calls, you don't post them on Facebook, you don't post them in a group. It's just begin and end and just those are the people and we just share privately together every week and form friendships. I just really am thinking about doing that. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you, you, each of you have teams, and if you can come up with two to three leaders in your team that are working at it, you know, I think it's hard sometimes to find people that are willing to plug in um, to do this. If, if that's the case and you haven't found them yet, then it's probably not the right time to do it. But at some point, that is something that you will have to start thinking about is doing an actual study with your team and really digging in and not letting it fall apart and staying the course with that. Um, you know, I will be honest with you. I'm going to just be honest with you. I have heard, I will not name names, and this is not in this team. I have heard of other teams. One of them is a diamond and one of them is an emerald. And I know these people personally, and I've not discussed it, but I've heard about what had happened. They started the book study with their team. They had them all buy the books, and they didn't finish. They didn't even get through the first chapter or two. They just dropped it off. So I am going to tell you that this is powerful. The 21 Irrefutable Laws is so powerful. The reason why I believe in it, and this is off the subject. This is not about Millionaire by Halftime. This is about growing momentum on your team. This is about building a community of trust on your team, building friendships that are close and collaborative on your team. People that rely on each other, they're no longer relying on you all the time. They form relationships with each other. They begin to trust one another. They begin to pour into each other's lives. It's not just the leader pours into each individual mm -hmm. team member. It's the team starts to rely on each other. Have you seen that happen on this team already? Mm -hmm. Have you seen mm -hmm. that that's the goal that I've tried to accomplish? You're no longer all coming to me and I'm helping individuals. I don't have a bunch of followers. I have a bunch of leaders now. And each of you are leaders on this team. And it doesn't matter if you don't feel that you're like a leader or not. You are a leader in growth and at different levels, you're all leaders. So I want you to believe that in yourself. And that is the goal that you need to try to create for your team. At some point, you need to start to do those studies with your team and pick a few leaders and bring them into a close-knit group and pour your life into them. And you can learn right alongside them. You don't have to be the master. You don't have to be the guru. You can read the chapters right along with them and ask each other the questions and learn from one another. And by doing so, it creates a collaborative friendship culture on your team where people believe that they're part of something that's going somewhere, something that's bigger than themselves, and they will buy into the vision of the leader, and all of a sudden they start to learn about where they're weak and where they struggle and where they're strong, and then they start to rely on their strengths, and they start to believe in themselves, and I'm telling you, it's, it's magical when that stuff starts to happen on a team, and I know that that's what can happen with each one of you. I want your teams to take off. I do. I want your teams to take off. And so I can think of people that are individuals on each one of your teams right now that I could pull in right now and do a 21 Laws with them. Maybe have a team of seven or eight of us that could do it. Um, and that means some of the people under each one of you that are really building, that are really going for it. Um, I could do that. Uh, and if you want me to do that, I will. Um, I Hopefully you wouldn't mind if I did that. Um, Not at all. I just feel like that, that could that could really help. That could help. And obviously, if one of you haven't been through it, then I would love, love to have you come, come through it with me as well. I don't want to make the thing like 20 people. If we have it too big, if it's more than seven or eight people or nine people, I think it's too big. 
So yeah. I think our issue was um, timing. You know, everybody couldn't get on at the same time, and it, you know, people's schedules. So I'm hoping it can come together to where we can do it again. But yeah, yeah. If we could get on with you. That would be great. Okay. Okay. I know Debbie will probably be interested because Debbie was the one that was uh, hanging with me. <laughs> I was hanging in there. Okay. But, but yeah. Okay. Well, I will tell you this. Um, this some of the people that have had some issues and they've fallen off. These are people outside of our team. Okay, way outside. They're coming to me because they're like seeing success on this team. They're seeing momentum. They're seeing explosive growth. And they're like, what is the deal? I'm like, we have a culture. We don't have something where I'm the head of it and everybody comes to me. We have a culture where everybody relies on each other. We have a friendship. We have a, a family atmosphere. And everybody knows each other. And everybody plugs in with each other. And I said, you guys don't have that from what I can hear. And, you know, I'm coaching these other people to where – this is imperative, that 21 irrefutable laws, because people don't even have a clue. Uh, I hear this from every pe people all the time. I thought I was a leader. You know, I had a position, or I was in charge of this, or I, I had to lead this whole expedition of whatever. And I thought I was a leader. And then I read this book, and I was going through it, and I realized I've never been a leader. I've been a manager. I've been a manager of people. And I didn't understand how to inspire them to believe in themselves and to take responsibility and to step up to the plate and let them take on leadership roles. So uh, that's what I want to try to do. I want to try to help you guys gain momentum on your teams. Uh, eventually, I, I mean, I would like to um, just have you guys start doing some trainings for the Freedom Team too, like new ambassador training once a month i would love to have somebody step up to the plate and do an ambassador training and not the same person every month but you know get you can use my powerpoint just come in there and do it i do that that'd be great that'd be, that'd fun. be great yeah that'd be great good practice for me because i'm starting mm -hmm. to do that with my team mm -hmm. i'd like to see you i'd like to see uh kelly bruce Lori, mary um uh miss miss wedge miss mccray miss wise miss hartman you know, Miss Wabshaw, whoever wants to do it. I mean, seriously, step up. Let me know if you're willing to do it. Let me tell you what that does. Let me tell you what that does. Your team will notice that you have credibility. And they will be inspired by your leadership position, the fact that you are taking on a task for an entire team that's bigger than you. That It, it just gives you some credibility and it gives you a sense of respect. And I really think that, Anybody on this call could could step up to the plate. I would love to see it. So, I don't um, whatever you need me to do. I think you're awesome. Thank you for all you people that are volunteering and saying I'll do it. I think that's awesome. I'm really proud of all of you. Um, I'll, I just, I'll do it sometime. I know, I, and I know you can. <laughs> awesome. Okay, don't forget tomorrow night. We have the power hour. I'm going to go advertise it again on the team page tonight when we get off of here. Uh, don't forget to share it on your timeline. Don't forget to send out personal invites. And uh, it's going to be incredible. We're going to have Taylor and Jacob Smith on, a senior gold and gold ambassador, just paid off $40,000 with the debt. We're going, to have, um, we're going to have Janet Huntiman on, who's Christine's sponsor. She's an emerald. And we're going to have um, Sarah McKegg on, who is on Cassie's team. She's one of Heather's sidelines over here, and Sarah's a gold ambassador, and she's become very successful on Plexus. So I think it's going to be a great night tomorrow. We're going to have some successful testimonies. Taylor has a really powerful health testimony also. She yes, she does. With it. Yes. Susie, yes. What? Did you, did no, you have your saying, Yes, it's going to be great tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Heather, yes, she's got a good health testimony, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've never heard Janet's um, testimony. Mm -hmm. Neither have I. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Very yeah. much so. Mm -hmm. Let's hope there's no technical difficulties. No kidding, man, right? <laughs> My fingers crossed. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I think that we have had a good evening. Are there any yeah, other issues? Excellent, Suzanne, as usual. Fabulous. 
You know, Suzanne, we were doing some of those trainings. I remember I did, I did an ambassador training. Yes, you did. And yes, Lori, you did. did Lori did the compensation plan. plan. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be good to uh, rejuvenate that again because it is, it it is good experience um, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you can give us the tools to do it. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So I, that gives me an idea of what to schedule for September. We will get a new ambassador on the, a new ambassador training on the books. Would you like, uh, would you think a Sunday night is the best night to do a new ambassador training? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. a Sunday night is usually open. We don't have anything going on those Sunday nights. And what do you think is seven CST a good time or what do you do? Six CST. I don't want to make it too early for people on the West coast. Eight o'clock CST, is that too early, late? Eight is better for California people because okay. it's dinner time. Okay. But, I mean, we're flexible too. So eight CST would be better for the West Coast. Yeah. Okay. All right. A lot of Cassie's team learns from her and they don't hop on my thing. My team is mostly not on the West Coast, but she is a part of my team, but her team usually gets her training. Believe it or not, but that's that's well, fun. We have a foundations training at seven p.m. CST. Okay, uh, but that's really just for newbies. Like it's okay, just, it's foundation. So. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Well, we'll do eight o'clock, and uh, I will start talking to some people. Okay. Thanks. Thanks again, Suzanne. It was excellent. Tonight. You're welcome. Thank My you. pleasure Thank as you. always. I feel like this is our weekly meeting. I really do. <laughs> Okay. Awesome guys. Love you so much. And don't forget next week is, uh, those other two chat. We're, no, we're going to do the, the actual team building, 18, chapter, which is chapter 18. 18, team building. Okay. That's the one. Don't forget it. Okay. And then right. the other two, uh, on the following week and we're done. Love y'all. Thanks everybody. Love you. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.